so good morning. To kick off our groundbreaking, um, I'm going to ask uh, Phoenix Vice Mayor Gallego to come up and start our ceremonies. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here today. This is an exciting day, and many of, for many of you in the audience here today, this is the culmination of years of work. So thank you for getting us here today. It's really an exciting day for all of us uh, on the elected official side as well, working together. Water is a great partnership. We do it with our neighboring communities, and I'm so glad today that we have Mayor Wires here, who I'll be get to introduce in a moment, as well as Council Member Kevin Thompson of Mesa. We are both re reformed uh, utility folks. I at, was at Salt River Project when this project began, and he at Southwest Gas. Um, so I actually got to see the project from the other side when it was all beginning, and I'm so glad to be here today as we celebrate the groundbreaking. It's a, a very exciting partnership with Amoresco, and we appreciate the great technical experience and know-how that Amoresco will bring to this project. We are at the largest water treatment plant in Arizona today, and we're going to be celebrating that we will be using the resources generated here even more efficiently. At the City of Phoenix, we have a general plan that says we want to be the most sustainable desert city in the world, and today is a big milestone towards getting us towards that goal. We're already reusing water, and now we're going to be using the natural gas that's generated here more efficiently. Even better, we will be bringing in $1.2 million as we are greening to help with all of our budgets, and as elected officials, we are all thankful for that additional revenue from the, the gas that was generated here. So thank you for helping us become more sustainable like taking thousands of cars off the road each year and it's generating money to help all of our cities move forward more efficiently. It's also helping us with air quality and in Phoenix it's helping us move towards our goal of 15 percent renewable energy citywide. We have a great record at the City of Phoenix investing in renewable energy and I actually was involved on the citizen side when we set the goal which was mostly focused on solar energy. So today's a big day for us and that we can make a big step forward in diversifying the renewable energy sources that we use at the city of Phoenix. And it's expected to be the largest of its kind in the nation. So it's really putting us on the map as we want to show leadership in being that most sustainable desert city. It's been a great partnership. I want to thank the water services department uh, in past and present employees who helped negotiate this project. They are one of our largest departments and you can see looking here today how impressive the infrastructure they operate is. It's not easy keeping water running in the city of Phoenix. We are a huge city um, with a lot of needs and so thank you to Katherine Sorensen and her department for their great leadership in making us have such a great department. With that, I want to turn it over to Mayor Wires, our, one of our great partner cities in managing water in the valley. Thank you, Mayor. She said everything I was going to say, so. <laughs> well, welcome, everybody. Um, you know, this really is cutting edge public private partnership, and that's something when I was in the legislature was talked about all the time public private partnership. How do you do that where uh, uh, private businesses want to get involved? Uh, with public offices to benefit all of our citizens and I think this is probably one of one of the best examples I've seen of, of just that you know it's uh, it probably is not uh, more fr uh, friendly not only is it more friendly to our environment but it also provides a real economic benefit as uh, Kate was just referring to to the cities involved when this was first brought to me uh, our city was uh, uh, hurting pretty bad I mean we were uh, four years ago, we were literally uh, about uh, the second worst financially strapped city in the nation. And when they brought this to me about, I guess it was a little, little less than three years ago, we were looking for any opportunities to do anything to benefit our city. And so, of course, it was something that caught my attention immediately. We've now reversed the flow. The city's doing fantastic. We're not financially strapped. We're one of the fastest growing cities economically. But we're doing it smart. And this just benefits what we already uh, had changed the course working on. So it's great for us to uh, be part of this uh, in, in renewable energy goals. You know, uh, our team, uh, which is led by Craig Johnson, gentleman in the back, 
Uh, I've got the utmost respect for you, sir. Uh, he is our water department director, and he's committed to the health and safety of our citizens in Glendale. And I know not just Glendale, but but the whole valley wide. And I know that, Craig. Uh, I do want to acknowledge Craig and his staff, who I know uh, worked hard uh, to make this partnership work uh, for everybody. It's projected this pr uh, project will reduce more than 44 thousand metric tons of co2 per year and that's not physical weight like you'd pick up a five pound bag of sugar it's it's a measurement of volume uh, and that's equal to planting more than 87,000 acres of pine forest which i find that pretty amazing actually uh, taking more than 70,000 cars off the road i think you referred to that earlier and reducing about 900,000 barrels of oil a year which is really remarkable uh, I, for one, uh, I've got an old expedition over there, but it's propane. And uh, I do believe in, in running on uh, alt fuels if possible. Uh, besides that, it's cheaper, and I haven't changed my spark plugs for like 10 years. So, <laughs> um, But I want to thank everyone for their hard work in putting this important partnership together uh, for the benefit, literally, of all of our citizens. And I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Amoresco's Senior Vice President, Michael Bacchus. Michael? If I start coughing, I apologize. I'm recovering from an ammonia. Um, look, I want to thank uh, Mayor Wires, uh, Vice Mayor Gallego, uh, Director Sorensen, Councilman uh, Turner, and Councilman Thompson, and Assistant Director Porter. Uh, I also want mostly to uh, uh, recognize uh, Mr. Bob Georgioff. Bob is our uh, senior executive uh, based in Tempe. Uh, Bob's uh, main roles are the growth of our company in the southwest, but more importantly, keeping uh, me out of trouble when I visit. And it, it Bob will attest it's a challenge to do that. Look, John Haywood, an English uh, playwright who lived hundreds of years ago, uh, once said, Rome wasn't built in a day, uh, but they were laying bricks every hour. Typically, we use this phrase uh, to remind us of the time needed to create something special, something great. And it's true. Sometimes these things take years to create something so innovative. Uh, but what's interesting is Rome is really just the result. The bricks of the system. Uh, the system is the greater goal. Focusing on the process to some extent is more important than worrying about the outcome. Over four years ago, Schrag made a decision to find a partner who could support their efforts to extract environmental and economic value from a waste of resource, the biogas that's just being flared at this point in time as a byproduct of their process. Six months later, after an intense vetting process, Amresco was fortunate enough to be afforded the opportunity to be that strategic partner. But our role wasn't just simply to come build a project. Our role was to identify and analyze an exhaustive list of project structures, both technical and business that at one point potentially incorporate other third parties as part of the project. Schrag's members selfishly desired Amoresco to evaluate all these options, identify them, analyze them, and present the pros and cons of each so that they can make an educated decision what was in the best interest of their respective communities. This effort, this Monmouth effort, was essentially the, the bricklaying, the process. And we knew the goal was to maximize this wasted resource, but we weren't focused as much about the outcome. We were focused on the process. And whenever we strayed a bit off course, we always knew we could count on Jeff Cowie to rope us back in and keep us on track, as you all will appreciate. <coughs> I have to tell you, after many uh, <coughs> twists and turns uh, in this lengthy, dynamic effort, I mean, honestly, you could have probably wrote a movie about some of the things that happened during this process. <laughs> In the late spring of 2015, a project structure and scope was chosen by the members and finalized. Naturally, one can only imagine the complexity of this project, uh, how challenging it is to paper it contractually. Um, and the city of Phoenix took the lead in that. The challenge for these folks was this was their full-time job, and our project was just an additional task they had to achieve. Um, but they did it. They did it uh, uh, in addition to their full-time job. And 
one year later in June of 2016, a little over six months ago, we executed all the agreements to move forward to be able to permit and uh, construct and design the project. So here we stand today, uh, preparing to break ground on what will be an innovative renewable energy project. Seriously, all great things take time. Andre Guide, a French author and winner of uh, the Nobel Prize in uh, Literature, once said, uh, man cannot discover new oceans unless he has the courage to lose sight of the shore. I want to recognize and applaud all of those individuals who chose to venture from their comfort zone. This is not what they do. They venture from their comfort zone and work tirelessly on this project, which not only will have a tremendous environmental impact in the positive, but a material economic impact to all the communities for which Chirag serves. <coughs> um, I want to thank all the members of the staff from Shrug that represent the cities. A special thanks to Jim Baer from Amoresco, who lived tirelessly through this effort, championed it. I will, uh, I'm going to thank Jacinta Duma from our office because she's inheriting the construction of this project, uh, which will be challenging, to say the least. Patty Kennedy, uh, Jeff Coey, uh, Blaine Keen, Stephanie Bracken, Stephen Weatherall, of course, Dennis Porter, uh, Ron Serio, and, and Mark Roy. Honestly, these poor people had to listen to this little guy with a funny voice come and show up day in and day out and argue why things should be done a certain way. But they stuck to it. They were passionate for this project and the benefit it would bring. And it kept, because of that, <coughs> it kept them engaged and driven to ensure the best possible project materialized. And here we are today to celebrate their success because the reality is they are the folks that brought this project to reality. So in closing, uh, we at Amoresco, and I think I speak for Bob as well, we're honored and we're humbled to be able to play a small role in what I think will be a marquee project nationwide that many people will try to duplicate. A sincere thanks from us all. And with that, I'd, I'd like to turn the mic back over to Dennis Porter. Thanks, Michael. <clears throat> Great weather today, right? So um, thank you, Michael. And, and really, uh, again, thanks to the Amoresco team. They've been a great partner uh, just to get to where we are today. And I, I look forward to a 20 year partnership or longer uh, well into the future. And Jim, you've worked tirelessly. I, I want to acknowledge Jim. And, and again, as, as, as the vice mayor mentioned, um, we are very sustainable at this facility. This is kind of a completion of kind of a three-legged stool. We reuse all of the reclaimed water either for the constructed wetlands. Uh, we provide a lot of water to the Palo Verde Nuclear Generating Station for their cooling. And, um, and we also uh, send water for irrigation of crops um, to the uh, Buckeye Irrigation District. So that's what we do with the reclaimed water. The biosolids, which are produced in those tanks to your right, and treated in those those anaerobic digesters, uh, the, that's all used and generated, treated to um, uh, be able to use as fertilizer for non-food crops. And so all of that is reused. Um, and so with this project and with the methane that is also generated in those tanks, we'll be able to sell that gas. And it's highly unusual, Vice Mayor, that we come to you asking, we're, typically we're asking for money, right? Because we gotta, we gotta support all these facilities and maintain this stuff. But in this case, we're actually providing revenue, so we don't we don't always get to do that. So we kind of like that. <clears throat> and again, we mentioned uh, Catherine mentioned uh, World Wetlands Day, so we've got the Trace Rios Wetlands, great recreational environmental project. I highly encourage you to go visit if you get an opportunity. Um, there's birds and animals and all kinds of stuff out there. It's really cool and fish. Um, and then last but not least, what I want to do is just thank the team. Uh, the team of elected officials from all of the, the agencies that have come together to make this project happen. That's hard to do. I mean, you, you, you got to take time out of their schedules and you got to get them together to understand a complex project and make happen. Um, so all the mayors and the city council from all the Shrog agencies we really appreciate um, this opportunity. The Shrog managers have worked tirelessly on this project for a number of years. Um, the Shrog spec committee and the TAC committees and all those different TROG committees 
have worked on this as well. There's a lot of them. <coughs> it's a big it's a big facility as you can see. And then last but not least, the Phoenix staff, Patty uh, um, and and uh, Jeff Cooey, and you guys have worked really hard. Um, Stuart and the operations folks, they get to work with Amoresco for the next 20 years on making sure that we're delivering the gas to make this thing happen. And then Stefan Weatherall, who I don't think he could make it here today, but he herded all the attorneys from all the all the agencies, and that's not always that's a hard thing to do internally, much less externally. So um, he kind of finished and got the the football across the finish line, and so I want to specifically thank him for doing that. So now is the big moment where we get shovels, and I'm going to invite you all up to grab a shovel, and we'll try to get a groundbreaking picture. With you.